So we getting ready to go to dinner and everybody's wondering, how bad is it going to be? Jennifer husband say, look, you know, if I'm the meal ticket, I'm the meal ticket. Just don't start with the heifer. Marge, however, is ready for Jennifer. If she starts, I'm going to finish it. Oh, so because of the vibe, they can't sit together. We got a men's table and a women's table. The guys are like, oh, we can eat in peace. <laughs> Melissa said, y'all could have sent us some drinks. Joe said, you're independent now. It's your money anyway. Oh, God. Teresa, okay, Joe, are you just trying to get your moment? Because right, you give me Penelope Thomas Bailey tea. Are you just trying to get a moment? Do you need a moment in the words of Jackie Tacky Pissy Christie? Not only did they tell you it was fake, but by this point, you'd seen the episode, so you know it was fake. But you still gonna say there must be some nugget of truth. Melissa ain't flirting with nobody but your short butt. Oh, Lord. Frank and Tanya is hammered because he went from white to beet red. I mean, beet red. Like, he is red as this sweater. Almost purple. Is he okay? Look like King Joffrey at his wedding. So now we get to talk about marriages and advice. Jackie gonna pipe up, don't let him curse at you. And March, oh, so you think Joe should leave me because I cursed at him? Jennifer, uh, staying quiet would have been fabulous. But Marge, why feed the beast? I would let that moment slide right on by. At the guy's table, Joe's telling Joe, I wouldn't let my wife treat me that way. She hard on you. You're no stranger to meanness, Margaret. To say my man is my meal ticket was mean. I mean, if the heifer want to be a housewife, that's her prerogative. She got five kids, it's her prerogative. And honestly, it would be too expensive for anybody else to take care of them, so yeah. So now Jen's taken Marge's story about sleeping with her boss back in the 60s and made it seem like Marge was going after him and was interested just because Marge said it wasn't a full-on assault, but it was still someone in a position of power over her. Coercion. Coercion is the word. And Marge says, I think you have a perception problem. The guys are trying to get the girls out because they're like, okay, this is about to go left. Now we're on our way home from the restaurant. Joe and Melissa are getting into it in the car, and they should know better. Oh, Joe is drunky, boo. He ain't no bigger than a minute. He always taking shots. Oh, God, we still doing this dang Melissa's got a job and Joe can't take it plot line. Really? Ha! <laughs> Girl, you wanted that man child. Now you got to deal with him. No, he ain't never going to grow up. But I don't buy this. It doesn't gel, it doesn't wash, it doesn't read. Y'all keep having this same little argument to stay on the show. Joe wants to be loved. Be sensitive. Are y'all buying this or does it, am I the only one that thinks this is just for the show? I think they went through this and now they're just like, we're just gonna keep rehashing and keep, it's Bravo, it's what they do. So I feel like they didn't already work this crap out and she making too much money for him to be whining like this. The devil has gotten into Melissa's soul. Oh. Can we get back to Teresa throwing things, please? That's why we watch. So the next morning, Joe checking in on Joe and the girls are checking in on Melissa and their fraudulent marriage issues. So Joe comes in and apologizes for ruining the night. If I ruin the night, you totally ruined the night. That was Jennifer's job. But you had to Penelope Thomas Bailey the moment. So they table their crap till later and we get ready for the boat ride. Teresa's going to say, I put on lemons. Does anyone want to suck my lemons? Well, you know, lemon is a proper word for what you have. Small, hard, sour, and bitter. So we took our quick little boat ride to lunch and Joe announces that him and Melissa had sex. So apparently they're okay. Thank you for letting us know. I, I didn't care. God, we're at lunch still talking about Joe and Melissa's marriage? Still? Okay, so who Joe on the phone with? We saw him say he was going to call somebody back in 20 minutes, and now his phone ringing at the table and Melissa looking at it. It seems to be staged.
So Dolores tells Joan, don't waste the best years of your life worrying about stuff that doesn't matter. And Black Dolores, that was some great advice. But Joe, why don't you just cut your phone off? Who keeps calling? Melissa's like, uh-uh, y'all are trying to punk me. It smells fishy. And not just because they're at a seafood joint. Uh-huh, it was all a ruse. Just like this whole fake fight. Oh my God. Nono was cute back in the day. Oh, this is a nice party. And we ended with the nice memorial, so let's get on to the next episode. So we open with Jennifer dealing with her parents' crap. Her mom is so stubborn she can't go see her grandchild. Now she's telling her mom about the meal ticket. So her mom is angry at the arranged marriage and that she ended up moving to America away from her family. And it wasn't her choice. Meanwhile, across town, Marge, Melissa, and Jackie get together for lunch. Now, Margaret wasn't being judgmental about how you were drinking at the pool party. You were face planting on concrete. She was concerned for your well-being, as were we all. Your husband was the one who really should have been concerned. That's the real issue. Why is Marge more concerned about your alcoholism than your husband? So Marge and Jackie are telling Melissa, we do see that you're different. You're, you've grown and blossomed and Joe's jealous. Joe's so scared because you don't need him and he knows you've got options. You don't have to stick with little Lord Short Lerard. But she likes her runt. She ain't gonna leave her runt. She like her runt. Her runt need to have more confidence. He needs a hobby and not a mistress, but a hobby. You ain't got time to sit home and coddle his ass like you used to. And that's okay, he gotta grow up. That's what happens when you marry a man child. Oh, so we're gonna go see a psychic to figure it out. That's what I would do too. If I had a marital issue, I would go to a psychic. Actually, I'd just call Dion Warwick Psychic Friends Hotline, 1-900-455-3838, cause I know the answers are there waiting for me. Oh, Marge said, do we wanna talk about Teresa? Because we know she's been getting it somewhere. Wait, wait, okay, so Jackie don't give head, nor do she get head? No wonder you're so uptight. Oh my God. Oh, oh. To each they own. To each they own. Or, well, I, I mean, you ain't getting none, so. <laughs> I guess just to each. You ain't getting your own, so just to each. I got my own, but you can go on with your each, girl. Shit, Dolores gotta get a biopsy. I like Black Dolores, I really do. I've really grown to like her character over these past few seasons. Oh, I'm sure she's gonna be fine. She's gonna be fine. Oh, her dog is so cute. He kinda looks like Pete. So instead of her doctor boyfriend, she calls over her ex-husband. This is that thruple ass marriage. What is David there for? Frank is providing the dick. You can act like he ain't, but you know he is. He fucking you and David. He's, I don't know, is he broke? He don't seem too broke. Maybe David's financing the whole operation. Maybe that's his purpose. Because, I mean, if you're telling him you're going for a biopsy, just go on and marry his ass again. The fuck? I agree with Frank. I like David, but David ain't treating you right. I mean, if you're going to leave me, at least upgrade. Don't move to the side with a different set of the same issues. <laughs> Gia is the only one on this show with sense. She's just like, why are you cleaning the dishwasher for the psychic? I don't know how you love Evan if he ain't eating puss. And he look hungry. Mm, mm, oh my God. I, I, that's so antiquated. That's like, I, that's like a laser disc. Like an eight track, like, oh. They still make you jokers. They still got y'all jokers in circulate. I mean, I guess it works. If neither one of you doing it, I mean, it's equal. How'd you? I, mm, that's why both you got them looks on your faces. Now I know. Now I know what that look means. And that's why you're so afraid of somebody stealing your man. I'm sorry. If I was heterosexual, I would be full on facing the place. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I, I don't understand. They playing at heterosexuality. <laughs> they playing at it. They probably just missionary, just boring as all. Oh my God. That's why you afraid of losing your man. That's why you afraid. And I'm wondering if he with you for the money. Mm. 
I don't trust it. This is a Lifetime movie in the making. Two sexually frustrated weirdos in Jersey? I don't know. <laughs> Jennifer on Instagram begging for a new nanny because her nanny went back to her home country. She said, bump this. But also it was a panorama, so she might not have just run away from Jen and her badass kids, but it was probably that. <laughs> the way Gia is side-eyeing this food, she's like, did you get enough? That ain't enough. Y'all have to be eating and drinking. Gia needs her own show. That heifer had to grow up fast with that crazy mama. Okay, so she's a medium who gets information from the spirit guides, not a psychic who can just see things that are coming. So before the reading, we're all hanging out in the kitchen and now we're talking about Jennifer begging for that nanny. Melissa said she should just put down the Instagram. She should. I have to agree with Melissa, she should. That's great, I'm here doing laundry in the building. Ba 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 ba. Laundry in the building. Ba 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 ba. Getting clothes clean with it. I am so mean with it. Laundry in the building today. I'm looking for a housekeeper. Not a nanny, a housekeeper. So I guess a housekeeper cleans too because nannies just tend to them kids and tell you, you better get to them dishes. I'll watch your crumb snatches. I ain't cleaning up after them. Well, Marge, if you're talking about people are unemployed, this stuff is out here offering a job. A job to people who need it. So I, I is it cringe? A lot of people had to let their nannies go. There's a lot of unemployed housekeepers out there. She was like, hey, hey, I got a job over here. I, I don't know if that's cringe or not. I mean, I, if she can afford to pay them, then that's a, that's a job in the economy. That's food in somebody's mouth. That's somebody's child being taken care of. I, I don't know if that's cringe or it's just reality. Because if I was in that line of work, I'd be real happy to go work for somebody that wealthy and be able to get some swag on top of it because you know that's the cheap gift she gives. She'll come back from a gifting suite and probably give you something. I can see her doing that. So Marge gets a very on-point reading about her grandfather or step-grandfather. But, you know, unlike Mary, she didn't marry him. So Delolo's reading, her grandparents is telling her they ha that house is crumbling and they're tired of your thruple ass marriage. You need to pick one. And David ain't it. So Delolo finally admits her and David may just part gracefully. I mean, was he ever here? He gives a mark T. Of course not. So the medium tells her that she's in a dead relationship, she's fine. But the second she brings up her beloved dog, Bo, she goes to tears. I understand. I completely understand. She knew David was on his way out and, you know, had already emotionally broken up with him. Bo, that's pure love. David was never love. David wasn't even like. David was, well, it makes sense on paper. The psychic tells Melissa she can keep on working. It's moving in the right direction. Oh, God. Jackie, you gonna say I ain't close with my family. I ain't even told them about the rumor Teresa spread for a plot line. Why would you tell them that? They go and watch the show and they probably don't care. I didn't. Did anybody care if Evan actually was cheating on Jack? I mean, hell, y'all, I don't know what y'all doing. Y'all had sex to get them kids and then seemed to move on. You probably think your vagina ugly. You probably one of them. Okay, now the medium spills the beans that Teresa's in a relationship. With what? That pool man. I wouldn't date Teresa. I'm like, mm-mm. Felon one, shame on you. Felon twice, I'm in prison. Prison? That'd be like dating Phaedra Parks. Jackie and her boring family? Oh, fast forward. And best fiends. Oh, God. Joe and Melissa on a date trying to patch up their marriage from this fake argument. More fast forward, more best fiends. Girl, these was two nothing-ass episodes. Oh, God. Jennifer, why are you being messy? Now, if you want to be supportive to your mama, why are you doing this in front of your dad? Why? Pull your mama to the side and tell her that and then sit both of them down and have a real conversation with them. But don't just spring this on them because now he's like, I didn't do that. And he looked like he got about 10 minutes left. Girl, you started a fight between them two. <laughs> Bill is so over it. Bill is looking at her like, why did you do this now? 
I was really gonna try to enjoy this breakfast. Child, now the granddaughter crying. She wishes her mom could just let it go. That's her whole life. Her whole life is gone. The best year gone, kaput, poi. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be hard to just let that go. I just didn't think you needed to do this in front of your daughter. But you know, you messy Jen. All right, well that was the shit. And I mean shit.